good alien books are a dime a dozen. You either find some that you absolutely love or you find some that has so many problems that you don't like, that there are so many issues with it that it's not even worth reading. And today I am happy to bring you one of the dime in the dozen, The Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey. is the must antip anticipated sequel to The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. I am doing a spoiler free review of this book but be warned if you haven't read The Fifth Wave you will be spoiled for things in that book. So first off I'm going to say that I love this book. I did have a few issues with it and it did sort of um, act as a bridge between the first and third book but overall it is a solid sequel that I gave four out of five stars to. So The Infinite Sea picks up at the end of The Fifth Wave where our characters uh, Cassie, uh, Cassie's brother Nugget, Zombie, Ringer, Tika, Pound Cape, and Dumbo are waiting at this hotel kind of place for Evan to come back. And the group is divided. You can, the tensions run high. They can't agree on a, plan, on a plan. The plan they do have is flimsy at best and the characters just don't get along. They constantly clash. Um, with the stress that they're under and the decisions they have to make. In this book we get a few new perspectives and one of the new perspectives that we get is Ringers and she was one of my favorite characters uh, that was introduced near the end of the fifth wave. Although we don't get much of her in that book, we get a lot of her in this book and I'm so glad for it because she's easily shot to my favorite character. Um, you get her backstory and a big chunk of this book is actually told from her perspective. I would say almost half of it is from Ringer's perspective. But the one thing I do want to say to you about this book is that it is incredibly shorter. It's about I think 180 pages, almost 200 pages shorter than The Fifth Wave. And that has a tremendous impact on the events that can happen in the book and the overall plot line. I, when I picked this up, I was kind of disappointed by how small it was. It's so tiny compared to The Fifth Wave. So I kind of went into this thinking like, wow, nothing's going to really happen and it's just going to be kind of a bridge. And although it was, because most of the things that happen in this don't really add to like the overall plot line where you have different... Um, points on your your line where certain things are supposed to happen and you get to the climax and then the resolution etc so nothing really adds to that but a few things and it makes you speculate about the things that they're seeing the things that they're going through but overall I don't feel like it really did um, this isn't a slow paced book by any means so don't take what I'm saying about it not adding anything to the over plot line as a slow paced book it is fast paced there's so much action in this book Rick Yancey's writing, of course, is phenomenal, A+, plus, just like it was in The Fifth Wave. He has this very sink or swim kind of writing style. When things happen, he doesn't directly tell the reader what just happened, what this means, and what kind of the trajectory, trajectory or the prognosis of what's going to happen in the future. It's kind of, here's what happens. If you don't get it, you don't get it, you sink. If you get it, you swim and you continue on with the story which works with this kind of story and the world he's created and the characters that are within it. It is very confusing at times and I found myself kind of rereading different parts just to make sure I understood what was going on. There's a lot of setup for what's going to happen in the third book. Uh, lots of setup. So it's really interesting but it also kind of sucks too because you see all the setup and then right when it's about to get good and you see where this is going the book kind of ended, especially with Ringer's perspective. You know, it gets really exciting and action-packed and intense, and then bam, end of book. And then you're you're kind of just left going like, where where's the rest of the story? Where's the rest of the story? And then I went online immediately to check when the next book is coming out, and it says August 2015, a full year from now, with this tiny little book to hold us over. So that really sucks. One thing that I absolutely love about Rick Rancy's writing style and his just vision for this this book is that he has this knack, this talent for driving the story in one direction and the reader's on board, we're chucking along, we know what's going to happen, we can see it, we're excited and then bam he rips the rug right out from underneath us and the story goes in a different way and the reader is left reeling like whoa what just happened, what just happened as the story keeps going. So you have to, it's kind of like, it's always a game of like catch up 
with his writing and that's so fantastic because it leaves the story to be unpredictable and you can't really tell where it's going there's this one part that just left me totally i was just my mind was just blown by how crazy uh the kind of like not a plot twist but where the plot was going and then boom in a different direction and just ups the intensity and the craziness by another notch so i definitely love that about this book overall i really enjoyed this book i gave it four out of five stars um it's such a fantastic and solid sequel i just wish that we got a little bit more from it maybe you know like 50 to 100 pages longer of a little bit more story maybe a little more answers maybe that are a little more clear and not so cryptic but overall i definitely love this and i cannot wait for the third book because this one really makes you yearn for it so let me know if you've read the infinite sea and what you thought of it down below thanks for watching